When we think of meteorites, the image of an asteroid hurtling through space, like the one that killed off the dinosaurs, might come to mind. But actually, hundreds of tons fall to the Earth each year, but the vast majority is broken up in the Earth's atmosphere and never makes it to the ground. Those that do are normally very small, but there are still hundreds of larger meteorites that crash into the Earth each year. The very large ones form impact craters like this one in Arizona, but a majority of meteorites, including the larger ones, land in the sea, so we never really get to see the, the evidence. Some bodies in our solar system, the moon being a good example, appear to be much more heavily cratered than the Earth. However, this paints a false picture, because the Earth actually receives many more meteorites than the moon due to its larger size, but we don't see them in part due to the protective nature of the Earth's atmosphere burning up smaller meteorites, but also because the Earth is very geologically active, so it will either subduct or erode away any meteorite craters which do occur. Do occur. Next, we're going to look at some different kinds of meteorites. So there's two main kinds of stony meteorites, chondrites being one, and actually the most common kind of meteorite found on Earth, make up about 85% of all finds. They're actually the oldest and most primitive kind of material that we know of, uh, which gives us a valuable insight into the early solar system. And they're very distinctive because they've got these chondrules, these little circles in the material, which are very distinctive of chondrites. What that basically means is that in the early solar system, when you've got these lumps of gas and dust with different materials, they fuse together, but they haven't undergone any metamorphic or uh, processes to, to, to melt them together, to mix them, or anything like that, which makes them very unique and interesting to look at. This meteorite in particular was found in uh, northwest Africa. The other kind of stony meteorites are achondrites, and like chondrites, they mainly consist of silicate materials. The difference being that they're igneous in nature, which means that at some point in their history, they would have been in a molten magma state. And the rocky planets, the outer crusts of Mercury, Venus, Mars, and even our own Earth, were formed in pretty much the same way. So they can tell us about the internal structure and formation of a lot of the planets. But although I mentioned before that chondrites are the most common, because these are so similar to planetary crusts, they're often misidentified and therefore less common to find. So, like chondrites, it's believed that most achondrites originate in the asteroid belt between Jupiter and Mars, but a few achondrites thought to originate from the Moon or Mars, which makes them very interesting to study. By contrast, iron meteorites are almost completely made up of metal, and they're thought to be the cause of larger asteroids which have undergone differentiation. They consist mainly of iron nickel metals with small amounts of sulphides and carbide materials but they also contain some trace elements of heavy metals such as iridium, gallium, and sometimes even gold. Iron meteorites are also very easy to recognise, as they've got these little dimples on the surface known as regmaglyphs. If an iron meteorite is cut and polished, it reveals this amazing pattern, which was formed by the very slow cooling and crystallisation of the metals. It's thought that this cooling occurred in much larger bodies, and which then broke apart and in subsequent evolution of the solar system, which makes them again very interesting to study.